Welcome back to the Ultimate Mead Maker Challenge. In this challenge, I put 16 mead makers through four challenges to find out who the best mead maker is. The winner of the Ultimate Mead Maker of 2023 will win $250 and a one-of-a-kind trophy. I want to give a special thanks to these fine folks for supporting the Ultimate Mead Maker this year. This is the first year it's happened, and it would not be fiscally possible without their help. To recap, in round one, we started off with a quiz all about mead making. We eliminated four contestants, and at the end of that round, we then moved on to a honey tasting test. I shipped out a box of eight honey sticks to each contestant, and they had 10 minutes to match the honey sticks with their correct varietal. We then eliminated four contestants after that round. We're now in round three, and we're making some mead. At the end of round two, I made the eight remaining contestants partner up with someone. I didn't tell them what their challenge was or why they were partnered up. Each duo has the challenge of making 50% of a mead. Their goal is to make a mead that is contrasting, yet will pair great with their partner's mead. They only had a few limitations on this challenge. They could not make the same mead, the flavors had to be contrasting in some manner, and the tasting will be a 50-50 split of their meads. Once I told them about this challenge, they had four months to make their meads. We'll talk about what each duo did as we taste them, so let's get to the tasting. Welcome to round three. We're here to taste all of those meads you just heard about from our wonderful contestants. We're gonna split them 50-50 and pour them basically to where it's 50% one person's, 50 the other, and it's hopefully going to create a great combination. Unfortunately, we're losing two groups, two mm. duos today. So we're gonna be down to four people at the end of this. I've got doing the most here. Of course, you've seen him on the channel many times and he's gonna help with the taste. Well, here we go. Let's All do right, it. So we're gonna start with our first group. It's Friday, I'm ready to drink. Our first duo okay. is Derek and Susan. They are brews. I'm gonna go ahead and, and put in here and let them talk about what they did with their <laughs> brews. For my entry, I made a sweet traditional mead with scorpion chilies. I used a combination of Arizona wildflower honey and Hawaiian mango honey. It fermented dry, so I stabilized and back sweetened it with some more mango honey. After it was crystal clear, I re-racked it and bottled it. Directly to the bottle, I added two drops of scorpion pepper tincture per 30 milliliters of mead. So fun little fact here, um, specifically Derek wanted his cold, which it is cold. Susan's is room temp, so we're gonna get a, <laughs> gonna get a somewhat- loop cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it'll be great. So let's get, we're gonna go 50-50. Curious. If, not worth it. If, uh, ooh, it's carbonated. Love that. So I'm gonna fill them all. And with all the same. Okay. I, okay, I see what you're doing. See what I'm doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Can you do a shot? Yeah. All right. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Derek, Susan, let's see how your combination is. And we don't know anything about these? Well, so I can I can go through and tell you a bunch. Um, they, I think they left some information. They didn't specifically on their bottles. Some other ones have it on theirs. Okay. I don't have theirs ready. What? So I, don't we're just gonna, I don't need to know anything about it. We're just it. gonna see how if we like if it. We're just, if we're just going based off of preference. Yeah, here we go. And, and to clarify, the goal is we're eliminating two Two, two groups are leaving tonight. Oh, two groups, yes. okay. So four people will Got be it. gone at the Got end it. of this. Okay. Smells good. It smells like honey. It does. Got a little like coffee blossom. Get very, ooh. I will say it's slightly cold. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little bit of carbonation. Of course, it's mixed with like a still mead. Spicy. It does have, yeah, it does have like a little bit of like a dark note to me. Like there's high, high floral brightness and then a little bit of dark something in there. To me, it's like coffee blossom, but it's also got that little bit of spice. I'm not wrong, right? There's like a heat spice in there. Like. There's a little bit, yeah. I feel feel back Is here. Is it ginger? Mm, mm -hmm. There's, because it doesn't feel like, like a pepper. It feels like something else. Yeah. It's just it's, enough though. It's just enough to give it a little kick, right but not like, yeah, but not totally kick, kill you. Mm. I like that though. I love the honey characters. I think those, that combination is good. It's pretty crushable. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's nothing I dislike about this. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing that's really jumping out at me where I'm like, oh, this was, this was. There are some flavors in there I can't identify though. Yeah, it's a little complex. It's a little muddy. But I also don't know what honeys, I don't, again, I did not look and see mm -hmm. exactly what okay. they did. So I'm gonna put this back here. You put yours back here. 
Okay. Put it in a row. Go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. okay. And then we will come back to it. You'll believe it for in a moment. Okay. Our next duo is none other than Bucky and oh, Larry. I know those You're guys. You're gonna have lots of friendly faces in this one. <laughs> so get excited for that. The idea in the end was to have a mixed berry mead with meadow foam honey. So we brewed, we actually both did both halves and then decided later which half we were gonna send in. So we both brewed a regular traditional with, I used wildflower, I think he used blackberry and a no water mead at the same uh, ending gravity. So they were both about 12-ish percent. Finished them both, got them all the way dry with, uh, I think we used 71B. And then we took them and blended them together and then added meadow foam until it tasted like we wanted it. Determined that dosage and then went and added all of the, stabilized and went and added all of the meadow foam to the traditional and then uh, did some additional adjusting and I ended up sending in the traditional and Matt sent in the berry made. Great. Oh, we got, we're gonna have a fun color here. Okay. All right, there's the information on this one. Do you wanna know or do you wanna go blind? Well, let's offer Bucky. Let's go blind. All right. That way everybody There's definitely that. a berry here. That's 100% some sort of berry, not just by color alone. And did they brew this specifically for this challenge? Okay. They had four okay. months, and I said, your, your combo duo has to create something new. Cannot be something you had. Got it. Because that, that would be the cheat way. Yes. Just pull something from the closet. Which I trust these people. They wouldn't do, do that. Yeah. So I smell berries. I smell mm -hmm. like a vanilla, like a soft. It might be from oak, but it's, it's kind of a soft vanilla kind of aromatic. I feel like it's true vanilla. Could be. I mean, it's strong. It. I'm almost getting like a berries and cream ice cream. Yeah, kind of. uh huh. You have a lot of uh, bright berry, middle berry. You got a lot of those characters. Mm hmm. The vanilla. Well, that's mainly what I get. Mm hmm. Ooh, a little tart. Got a little zing on there. A little hot. A little hot, yeah. Mm hmm. Pretty good, though. Yeah. There's something like tart. And then all of a sudden there's a little something in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's not quite buttery, but it's got like a perception of... I'm sensing something savory. Yeah, that's what it is, okay. Like an umami kind of. I, I was, yeah. as you were saying that I was, I'm thinking salt, salt, yeah, yeah, salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know that it's, it might be like some kind of glutamate, but there's something like savory. It is, it's got this dip. Bright, and then it goes down in this little zone, and then it comes back up, like the end is that. Where you said that heat, a little bit of that tartness comes back. There's a lot of acid on the exhale, uh -huh. too. It is, it is thick. Also, it is viscous. Yes. I don't You're, think it's bad. It's definitely like a lot of, a lot of mouth profile, yeah. a lot of that, but right it does make here. you want to drink more. Yeah, it's, it's like borderline jammy. Mm -hmm. It's pretty dense. No, Bucky's known for his yes, jams. Yes, he is. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's not bad. I'm, I'm can't get past the berries and then that little profile in the middle you're talking about. I don't, mm -hmm. I can't quite pinpoint what it is. It's got, it's definitely got a youthful flavor in there though. It's definitely got a young fruit winey kind of flavor. I mean, it is his I mean, raspberry, blackberry, blueberry. Okay. So whatever, whatever Larry did, which I don't know, honestly. Interesting. Okay. All right. Number two. Number two. We're going to have another cold Luke, a uh, little bit cold mead. We have okay. Kilted Shaver. Okay. And Kyle Ducharme. Okay. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I, Kilted is on my Discord yeah. server too. These are so. all a lot of Discord friends. So Great. let's let's see what they did with theirs. My half of the Ultimate Mead Maker Round Three mead was a lemon mead. I made a Skeeter P recipe, so a lemon base um, alcoholic beverage, but instead of sugar, I used honey. Um, I fermented it with QA23 yeast to warm, and um, it's around 10%, and I back sweetened it to 1030 to try to balance it a little bit more. I also added hibiscus to make it a little bit more fruity, and also to add a pink hue color to mix with the blueberry meat. Oh, worry. that's a beautiful color. No worry about oxidization there. Just a... <laughs> oh, they... did they make the same thing? Well... 
sound effect there. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> you all won't, you all went for the same color. Lemonade. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it smells like lemonade. Pink smells, lemonade. Y'all make pink like, lemonade? <laughs> smells like key, uh, Skeeter pee. It, yes, it does, yep. Got a lot of lemon on there. That's all I get. Mm hmm. It's one note on the nose. Woo! It's got some tartness to it's it. Start. There's, there's citric acid, it's pithy. It's not overly mm. bitter, but it is definitely astringent. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's like, I don't think it's too bad, but it just keeps rising. You know, mm. I feel like sometimes with the, with a lemon, sometimes you bite into it and it's like sour and then it dissipates pretty fast. So I feel like this is going up more so over time. Yeah. I feel like it needs a little bit more sweetness to maybe balance that. It's pretty dry mm -hmm. for something so lemony and pithy. It's refreshing though. I, I would like this carbonated. I'd love to see what that looks like and maybe dial the ABV back a little right. bit. I can I can feel that this is this is not like a three or four percent. Yeah. You know. That's not bad though. It's refreshing. Yeah, it's refreshing. I was gonna say I feel like I could have a lot of this and the, the tartness is not mm. bad by any means. Especially no. when you know it is supposed to be a lemonade brand. Pretty good. Very good. That Look at this color my, spread we got here. Might be my favorite so far. Alright and last but not least we have Tracy and Cassie, and here's what they did. This meat is a blueberry fruit bomb, I and mean, it's the first fruit bomb I've ever made, so I was a little nervous about it. I'm using blueberry blossom honey I got from Crystals. I added lactose in the primary, and I used RC212. Um, I did a staggered nutrient schedule, and I aged it for about two weeks on Hungarian oak at the recommendation of my partner, and then I just let it vibe until I sent it to you. Cassie and I decided to partner up for the Ultimate Mead Maker 23 Round 3. She makes a fantastic blueberry and we decided for me to create a lavender. I started creating this lavender by making a traditional three gallon batch of mead with Texas wildflower honey. I fermented it to dry and I then added in Monin lavender syrup, lavender flowers, and a combination of the two to create three separate one gallon batches. I then swapped bottles with Cassie and we zoomed over the Discord video and blended each of the three lavenders with her blueberry. And we decided on the strongest one, which was just the straight up lavender flowers paired best with that to create the combination of the blueberry lavender. Yep. So all of that beautiful color from Tracy's is now just a mass purple. Hmm. That's, That's not a what lot I... Of, a lot of floral. Not what I expected it to smell like. Yeah, this is a, like a um, stick your nose in some flowers. There's a kind of, almost a soapy kind of... I think it's the, I think it's lavender. Okay. Has to be. We've we've had some experience with lavender <laughs> we've recently. We've had quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, there's almost a soapy kind of aroma in there. Or like perfume. Yeah. Lotion. Like... Like scented hand lotion. Yeah. There's a bit of a honey aroma, but it's kind of mute. I can't get over the, the lavender, sorry. It's it's pretty in your face. Ooh. Yeah, hit with a lot of lavender and then a grip of flowers. Those flowers just kind of around you. Mm -hmm. There's, um, it kind of dances around up here and then it like goes right off the diving board. <laughs> yeah. I, drops into it there's deep there's a lot of uh, flower bitterness in here mm -hmm. but it, it's like there's like a raisiny hmm. deep tannic yeah. thing that happens it's but there's like a fall off into it it's i i haven't experienced something like that really where you're you know we've talked about like the stair step of flavor but this is more like a plummet it is a <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah interesting i think there's a lot of floral and it, like the honey character is hard to find with how much other, I believe floral ingredient has been added to this. Um, it's got a, a bit of a, like a rose water kind of flavor too. Like a rose petal tea. Okay. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. Okay. I want you to grab all four. I'm gonna clear the stage a little bit. We are going to take a second, retaste through. Okay. I want you to decide. In a moment I'll say three, two, one. We're gonna put the two cups that we're gonna eliminate forward. 
Okay. Leaving the ones that we want that, that will move stay in the game towards us. So move the ones you want away. And if we don't agree, then what happens? Then we will talk. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get a talking to. We're okay. gonna have a moment. So is this the part where we like fast forward and we like, Well for them it's to full motion. <laughs> That's very You ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Oh wait, we're eliminating. Sorry. Eliminating. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry for any heart attacks out there. We have discussed. We went. We went into executive session. We did. We had to. We had to pause. You were stressed out there. I'm sure. The people moving us, moving on tonight. I R. This is Kilted Shaver. Kyle. I want to say this right. Yep. Kyle. Tracy. And Cassie. I'm sorry, friends. I thank you for participating in this year's Ultimate Meat Maker. That leaves us with four. Four. Currently still going. Going into the final round. Well, I'll be. They are Derek and Susan. Larry. And I don't want to say the wrong name. Bucky. Bucky. Yeah. So yeah. I hope you're excited for round four because I've already got BC can see them. Yeah. I've got four boxes. You do. Ready to be shipped off with a new challenge. Bum, bum, bum. Well, thank you to everyone for um, participating in this one. This was a grueling challenge, but it was a lot of fun. This was fun. This. Thank I'm, you for having me. Thank you for sharing and letting me be a part of this. Thank you. And so ends round three of the Ultimate Mead Maker. We're moving on to round four, so let's make more mead. We're in the final four with our contestants, and we're gonna make them make even more mead. But this time, there's another twist. I shipped out a box of ingredients to each contestant. They all had the same thing. Each contestant received a 40 ounce bottle of wildflower honey a packet of 71B, and a blueberry puree syrup. They were given the challenge to make a mead with those three ingredients. However, they were allowed one extra adjunct to add to their brew. It could be any singular thing, ingredient or otherwise, but they could not do more than that. I gave them four months to complete their meads and get them to me. So let's hear what each person did. So I chose pink peppercorns. Um, I chose it because I wanted to have something that would be a little fruity. It's nothing that I've worked with before. Um, and also that would bring like a little bit of spice and um, something that would be interesting that maybe nobody else had used. My name's Matt. Uh, I did a spin on the, the classic uh, lemon drop hydromel recipe. So my rationale was I wanted to pick an ingredient that would add some flavor and, and some acid. So I did about a two gallon batch. I used, I think, 16 ounces of lemon juice and like the zest and um, juice of another lemon and used the, the secret ingredient, compensated for that by reducing the amount of honey in the recipe. I think I did a little bit of citric acid adjustment at the end and kind of back sweetened it to taste and, and then uh, force carbonated it. So I chose the uh, black Nilgiri tea with uh, vanilla, hoping to <clears throat> touch on the uh, tannins needed and a little bit of acid from the tea. I did a uh, boil with, I think it was like a half ounce or one ounce. I don't remember, I have to look at the recipe. And then also did um, a steep and secondary to enhance that uh, vanilla flavor a little bit more. Hoping to touch on the blueberries, get a desserty character. But yeah, that secret ingredient was tough. I made, I also used lemon. I did it like a um, standard strength, so like 12%, and I carved it with to like champagne levels. And then I sent my first bottle in and the package got lost. And I sent the second bottle in and it got destroyed in shipping. So unfortunately, due to all of that, I'm, I'm out. We still love you, Larry. Maybe next year. Tony, welcome. Cool. You've briefly heard some explanations of what is going on. We're gonna go ahead and taste these. These should have, hopefully, blueberry flavoring involved. Okay. Now, the extra ingredient is up to them. They paired them with whatever they felt like would work. And, and, and you could, any, they could have done any style that they really wanted. Yeah, to the I, mean, I mean, so they, they were limited to like three pounds of honey, this like eight ounce bottle of syrup. So, I mean, they could try and make like a super strong mead. 
um, but they're gonna, they, they probably would only have two, two bottles to go. So sure. okay. I'm assuming most of them went lighter, but I also don't know for sure. Sure. We're gonna go ahead and start. I have an A, B, and C. We're gonna start with A, of course, and A is this person right here, and they're gonna talk about their ingredient right now. Here we go. All right. Mm. Mm, we got still mead. Decently sweet. It does have like a lot of a, a little bit of a cherry note. It's like a, an herbaceousness to it. Um, uh -huh. It's slight, like, um, I don't know if this is, I don't know, we'll be able to tell, I guess, as we go through this more, maybe it's a result of the honey, but it has like a kind of like a green, like a green anise mm, thing a little bit. Yeah, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. I'm getting like a subtle cherry. That's good though. So I, mm -hmm. I like the blueberry side, it's interesting. I'm looking for an extra ingredient, of course, because I know what the challenge is, but that does not mean that it's not there. Did you make a mead from what you sent them? No, they had the ingredients. So there's not a control? No, no. Okay, That's I was just case. curious. No, they, they had the three ingredients and they made the mead and they added their thing. Yeah, this is good. There's like, um, has a really, actually has a great mouthfeel. It's very, it's got a brightness to it, which is kind of fun. Very well balanced in, in its sugar levels. Um, Alcohol's in check. The light, like it's heavy. Like it's not heavy on the palate, but it's rich on the palate. Um, it's very full body, but it, mm -hmm. it does, it's lifting too. Like on its finish, it's it, it's long, but it, it's also clean and yep. and up, and up. It's just it's really good. All right, we're going to B. Sparkling. Spoilers for whoever this very is. Very different color. Um, yeah, a little more light. Ooh, man, that nose is vastly different. Yeah. Talk about this is green. Like, you got the green element. <laughs> yeah, this is like underripe blueberry, right? Uh, blueberries are crazy because they, you know, you'll get some that they're like kind of sour and tart, yeah. and then you eat one another one, and it's very, very sweet. This one has a, a, a very large nose. It's, it makes me wonder if that green thing is coming from the honey itself, or the so. green thing, because I I can feel it here too, and I think it's just it, I'm not mad about it because I you can tell <laughs> I can just tell that like we'll see when we get to see, but everyone's maintained the integrity of. Yeah. Of the ingredients, right? Like that's, or at least the first two have, right? Yes. That's an, an important aspect of all this. Ooh, very bright. Acid punch on this one. Carbonation's there. I think that also adds to that acid punch. But the blueberry note, like I said, is more acidic style blueberry. Yeah, very well balanced, clean. It's very crushable. It's very, um. I'm, I'm searching in these two, like what the, ad, the other adjunct is, mm -hmm. and I can't, I don't know what it is. Like I didn't want. To, that's what point. I didn't want to give us any feelers. I I don't know what these are. Okay. I've tried to not look as much as possible, only because then I would be looking for those things. I wanted it just to be a a fair, balanced thing. The um, there is this does feel like it has some lemon zesty side to it. Like it's got some bright. I was gonna say there's a citrus element to yep. this that you kind of you kind of beat me to the punch there, but but it's not bad. It pairs well with mm -hmm. what's going on here, and the sweetness is there just enough to support that. Really, um, really light, like almost semi sparkling. It's it's yeah. very very fine bubbles. Yeah, um, which which I, don't I mind like. It though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't mind it. Cool. Shall we see right. what's happening here? Also, a very different color. I mean, the, the A and A and C in terms of color, like we're probably the most similar, but this has a little bit darker. Yeah. More, very uh, golden. Yeah, this has to be the honey or the blueberry. This because this green thing is in it again, and like, it's almost more present in this. Yeah. So we're gonna have a, a dog bark here in a second. Whoa. Oh yeah, very different. <laughs> All wow. right. Got like um, there's a maple syrupy yeah, element or like to this. Yeah, like vanilla, like cream. Yeah, there's yeah. okay. I feel like the adjunct is a lot more apparent in this one. It um, does have like yeah, very very strong vanilla grabbing you, but I do I do like that. Ah, it's really good. <laughs> they're all really good, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, they're all very, very good. All very different too. That's what's interesting. Yeah. Is like, I, for a while I thought maybe it's gonna end up being super similar, but y'all have like really. Ah, uh, this is gonna be kind of tough. Is it? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're they're all great. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I'm split. You're, we're kind of splitting hairs here because they're. I, I need a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, Which one do you need? Uh, just A and B. A and B. Okay. Yeah. I've eliminated one. Okay. I, I, I think I've I'm eliminated one. I'm turning my, one. my cups around. <laughs> I think part of this, our challenge here, is we want to make sure in th that they've continued to still give some blueberry element, as this would be considered a blueberry mead. All right, I'm, I, I have, yeah, all right. I say in a moment we do a three, two, one. 
pop the one down that you think will win, deserves to win. And then we'll talk if we need to. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, so we, we've always had opposing session. opinions We're here. going into a session. <laughs> All right. We are going to declare a winner. You ready? Three, two, one. B is the winner. I was going to say, so I, I want to crown it. We're going to, we're going to talk in here a second. I'll kind of off, off the air. Cause we want to make sure that you know, you, you are appreciated and all the things you've done, but I want to award this trophy right here in the $250 that comes with it to Bucky or Matthew Allen. You are the ultimate meat maker of 2023. You'll be receiving this in the Cheers, mail. Man. And I sure hope that it is splayed up on your wall in your living room for everyone who walks in to see. But, oh, wow, well, it's it's a big honor to uh, win this award. And I, I definitely want to thank uh, Man Made Mead for putting us on. It was just like super fun. I think uh, neat format for a competition is not like anything else. and. Um, and thanks to Tony for and and BC for judging things. Um, but the, I guess the thing, I'm just completely shocked because of all 16 or however 20 people that we started with are all amazing mead makers. I've had most of their meads before. They're fantastic, um, really talented people. Um, so I'm sure there's some some luck involved. I had a great partner, Larry, for one of the rounds, who really uh, helped me out a lot. So. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I'm super surprised. I didn't. I really didn't expect this. Um, especially this last challenge. I think I had the lowest confidence of any round going in that that I had a chance. Because um, I think that ingredient was really a big challenge. So um, I know. I know we all kind of struggled with what to do with it. So um, anyway, but but thanks a lot. I can't wait to go back in the uh, Discord and like see you guys talking about things as well. That'll be fun. And so ends the 2023 Ultimate Mead Maker Challenge. After four rounds, 16 people from the beginning, Bucky has won this trophy right here, which is one of a kind. Literally, you can't get this anywhere else other than by winning this challenge. He's also getting $250, and he gets his entry fee for next year's waived. Now, I say entry fee because some of you might be interested in being a part of next year's competition. This year, I pulled people from the Discord. This next year is a little different. If you go down below, there is a registration page for the Ultimate Bead Maker of 2024. You've got roughly about two months to send in a bottle of any mead you have to me. And I'll have information on shipping location and those things. There's an entry fee, that's $20, and that is partially to help fund next year's event. You'll also be listed as a, a sponsor or a supporter um, of the event because you're supporting it. Go on there, you pay your 20 bucks, you send me any mead that you think um, could win or could score really high. I'll be taking all however many meads I get and running a small competition with them. The top 16 scoring meads, doesn't matter category or anything, are gonna be the ones or the people that move along to be part of the 2024 competition. So I'll have a, its own little like score page and stuff like that be top scoring out of that. What's important here is if you want to win this trophy and you want to be involved, if you do get chosen in the top 16, you have to be comfortable being on camera because there are lots of times where we, I need you to be on camera, it's YouTube content, and you need to be willing to talk as well as part of it. It is limited to the US, unfortunately, only because of shipping things. I do have to ship out boxes of stuff for challenges and things, and I'm not willing to do that overseas based off the expense and uh, difficulty that that is. I'm sorry to those of you who are not able to be a part of it for that reason. Next year, I'll have a very similar trophy with 2024 engraved on it, of course. $250 to share with the winner. It's gonna be grueling. Get ready for four more challenges, but I'm excited for next year. Get your bottles shipped to me before, uh, I think it's December 28th is my last day to accept bottles because the first week of January, I'm gonna be basically going through and doing my big tasting so we can get this competition started. 
You have to register, go register your meads down below. It'll share you the location on how to get those things to me. Anything that's not registered and sent to me will not be eligible for the competition. So comment down below what you thought of this. Thank you to my 16 contestants. Thank you to my tasters. Thank you to everyone involved. My, the people who have sponsored this and uh, helped support this challenge. This has been a lot of fun, a big challenge and a lot of work. So I hope you'll hit like on this video for next year. And I hope you will subscribe to the channel because I got plenty more content coming your way. So until 2024, go ahead and check out those links below and I'll see you.